All right, everybody, we are back mm -hmm. again in this Ozzy Osbourne album review series, which will eventually get to ranking them. And we're kind of flying through this here. I think he's got a good, what, 10 albums or something like that. Um, but yeah, we're flying through this thing. We're already at the fourth album, 1986, Ultimate Sin. And super cool album cover here. Ozzy is a little demon there, all the lava and stuff like that. Explosions back there. Really cool album cover, one of my favorites in his discography. But yeah, um, on this record here, you got a couple of key um, lineup changes here. And obviously, uh, Jakey Lee from the album before this, uh, Bark at the Moon, is really underrated, in my opinion, as a guitarist. But he's back on this thing here. Then we have um, Bob Days, who's actually not featured on bass in this one. Instead, you got Phil Susan, I think they say it, um, who was credited. He actually wrote um, the song. The most famous one off here, Shot in the Dark. Um, he wrote that in a band he was previously in who didn't get signed or anything, but and that's where that song came from. But then you also got probably my favorite drummer in the uh, Ozzy discography, um, and Randy Castillo, Castillo, however you say that too. I'm not very good at pronouncing these things, but <laughs> some of these names. But yeah, Randy Castillo is. Such a great drummer, such an impactful drummer, hits that stuff hard, really gives this album a big feel, that big 80s kind of drumming. And it looks like on the back here, guys, again, we got a situation where um, the track listing is not the same as it actually plays in the album, which is pretty strange, but so we'll do what we did last time and pull out the actual record. I actually didn't notice that until just now, but uh, <laughs> there we go, we got a pretty cool shot here of. Ozzy and the band. I actually have an old merch thing too. Alrighty, let me get this situated here, guys. Set that right up there. And we'll hop into side one. Let me pop this over here as well. There we go. We'll hop right into side one. And we're looking at the title track, The Ultimate Sin. Banger of a track to open this thing. That heavy riffing and I love Jakey e. Lee's guitar tone. This is probably my favorite Jakey e. Lee um, work out of anything he's done as far as guitar playing. I he absolutely tears this thing up and he's got you know his footprints all over this thing with his tone, his cleans are like they ring on this thing and the heavies are just big crunchy heavy riffs and a heavy sound to it. But anyways yeah Ultimate Sin I love the lyrics. It's like a, you know enough is enough. If you mess with me you're playing with fire. There's no point in screaming, or because uh, you won't be heard. I love lyrics like that's just badass Aussie lyrics right there. Aussie right in the mid '80s, um, just heavy lyrics, really heavy sounding album and production. Then we've got Secret Loser, which is a pretty cool one. It has a really nice breakdown. Again, I'm gonna be saying that a lot during these album reviews for Aussie because he's like the king of them. I'm telling you, he's got like incredible bridges, breakdowns, whatever you want to call them. About you know, and I, this Secret Loser just got another one. Um, although the chorus, I would say, gets a little, you know, I mean, it's it's catchy and all, but I mean, it could be a little more interesting. Then we've got Never Know Why, which is, again, kind of, I love that song. I really love every song on here, at, like, big time. I'm a big fan of this album, which, before I continue, I'll go ahead and say, it, like, Ozzy, apparently, like, this is, like, his least favorite album in his discography. And I'm like, what? Like, out of all the ones you've done, man, you're not a big fan of this one? And, he, and I, he said he hates the production, but I don't really think the production is all that bad on here. But anyways, uh, yeah, never know why. The main chorus is kind of like a, you know, trying to be like a rock anthem, you know, we rock or whatever. It's kind of a little corny, but I, I do dig the song. Then we've got Thank God for the Bomb. That is a freaking great song. That uh, The harmonics in that thing are awesome. And then the little fills that... Um, Jakey e. Lee does in the verse after each line. Big fan of that one. And then we've got Never, which is, man, an, another incredible song. I love the chorus, and the and I love the pre-chorus, too, like forever and ever now. Like, that's just super hooky. A lot of big hooks on this. And I also got to mention the, the title track, too, ultra hooky um, chorus. And the title track of this... You know, it's one of my favorite um, Aussie songs of all time, hands down. Then, we flip over to side two, where we got another one of my favorite Aussie tracks of all time, which is 
One of my favorites off here, Lightning Strikes. What a badass riff. Wow. And some uh, he heavy lyrics. Again, this, this album's got some really cool, clever lyrics. I'm not apologizing. I don't give a damn. You know, and the I am what I am or whatever, however that goes. But, um, yeah, oh, I mean, and I love the, the pre-chorus, the, like, super heavy, um, like, the, nah, 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 like, the, it's just such a thick sound Jakey Lee gets on this record. I, I'm a huge fan of that song. Oh, man, just an incredible one. And then you have another one that's just a ginormous song, um, or enormous song. I don't know why I said ginormous. I don't think that's a word, but, <laughs> Um, Killer of Giants, my God, this is the epic on the album, and this is that this is that clean kind of ringing tone I was talking about that Jakey e. Lee gets on this album during his cleans, and this is where Randy Castillo really shines too with the after like the first chorus when they kick back into the verse the big drums he just pounds those things, and man, what that, that's got to be another one of my favorite songs of all time in Ozzy's entire catalog. It's just, man, I'll never forget when I heard that first song off here. Because at first I'd heard, uh, I mean, I, everybody's kind of heard Shot in the Dark, you know, and stuff like that. But once I got to Killer of Giants on this side, I was like, whew, just blew me away. It gives me the goosebumps just thinking about it. Then we've got Fool Like You, another super cool song with hooky verse as well as a hooky chorus. The whole thing is just hooky throughout. Big fan of it. And then you end it with the mega hit off this thing. But I love it anyways. Shot in the dark. Got kind of a synthy feel to it. More of a synthy feel than I would say the um, other tracks on this album. But uh, such an incredible song. That that one, I mean, hits are hits for a reason. Sometimes I am like, you know, if you've seen some of my other reviews, some hits I am just, I'm tired of and not really a fan of anymore. Shot in the dark, nah, that ain't overplayed to me. I love it. And it's a great way to close out this freaking incredible record. Such a badass album badass tracks and badass lyrics all over this thing and a couple this thing hosts a couple of my favorite Aussie songs of all time like the other ones that I've reviewed do I mean his albums are just sprinkled with greatness but anyways guys next time we're gonna have another uh, lineup change another guitar player change again you're gonna see that a lot throughout Aussie's discography will be oh, um, the next album will be 1989's no Rest for the Wicked, which has a very young and hungry Zach Wild on it. So we'll be checking out that one next time. Like, subscribe. Let me know what you think about this controversial album. People either love it or hate it. So I'd love to hear everybody's thoughts on it. Thanks, guys.